Everybody seems to be surprised right now. Hey friends, what's going on? Bedros Koulian here, and I wanna to talk to you guys about why everyone seems to be so surprised about what's happening in Afghanistan. Listen, if you think what's happening in Afghanistan is a travesty and a tragedy, it is. It is. I come from a communist country. I know what it's like when a country that's under tyrannical rule ends up having a taste of freedom and then loses it, right? And that's what's happening in Afghanistan right now. And it's, and it's sad and it's unfortunate because for 20 years they got to see a different way of living. They got to see a different example of how things could be for them. And, and all of a sudden, bam, we left. But why is everybody so surprised that this happened? That President Biden just up and pulled the ripcord and said, hey, we're leaving Afghanistan and that it's, it's going to be all right. Would you expect anything different from someone who's tyrannical here, from someone who's working to erode your freedoms here, from someone who continues to lie and mislead, change narratives, in fact, continues to position patriots and veterans as extremists? Would you expect anything different from someone like Joe Biden, who otherwise would pull the single biggest factor out of Afghanistan that's protecting young men, young girls, and women in that country because they don't have much of a voice. Don't be surprised when a tyrannical leader like Biden all of a sudden does something that creates a tyrannical environment again. And by the way, let me tell you, it's going to be an even more of an extreme environment in Afghanistan than it's ever been even 20 years ago. I hope you know that because now they're out for blood. They're looking to actually kill people that supported and helped the American military. And we left them behind. We left them behind and that breaks my heart because my family and I, we had to fight really hard to be able to not only escape the Soviet Union, but to legally enter the United States I was given that opportunity and that chance. My dad was a member of the Communist Party. If he was just left there, he may not be around today. Thankfully, he's in his 80s with my mom and they live in Anaheim and everything's fantastic for my parents and my family, but things could have been very different if the United States did not support you know, communists who wanted to defect and come to a free country like the United States. And I share this with you guys because don't be freaking surprised in a situation like this, when you have a president who is stripping away your freedoms, who is tearing down your First Amendment, and by the way, he's not tearing down your First Amendment by taking it out of the Constitution. See, that would incite civil war. The best way to tear down and erode your First Amendment, your, your freedom of speech, is to use mass media to control the masses through fact finders, fact checkers, censorship of your posts, right? YouTube, Google, Instagram, Facebook, and I have a feeling this post might actually get taken down once I put it up, but it's worth sharing. Someone like me as a former communist who escaped and came to freedom, man, thank God this country accepted us. And thank God we had, we had the kind of leadership in the 80s that was open to that, right? And so when you've got someone like Joe Biden who says, hey, we're going to keep tightening the screws down in what used to be the American way, freedom, liberties, democracy, capitalism, why then would he be interested in growing democracy, freedom, and a new way of life in Afghanistan? He'd rather hand that country back over to the tyrants the Taliban who had it in the first place. So don't be surprised. Instead, stand up. Say something. If you're wondering why this whole thing continues, what was going to be a two-week lockdown and a two-week shutdown has now continued on to be what started off as a flattening of the curve has now carried on to well over a year, a year and a half now, of erosion of our country, increasing of prices, you have all these people on unemployment. 
The dollar is losing value. America is losing its position as a superpower. And all the things that you might want to say about the United States, let me tell you this, that it's the United States that goes and backs other countries when they're in need. But we voted him in. And if you want him out, then you might want to consider speaking about it, doing something about it. Because if you think you're just going to sit there and go, someone should do something about this, you are that someone. You are that someone. Say something. Even if you have 10 followers, say something. Stand up. Signal to social media, to people around you, that you don't agree with this. Because the fastest and easiest way to get control and compliance of the masses is to confuse them, create uncertainty, create doubt, and then say, but I got you. Here's how we're going to fix things. And that's exactly what's happened since March 16th, 2020. We shut down the country for two weeks. We masked, then we double masked, then we, we vaxxed. The vax was going to help, then it didn't. Now there's a registration. And you know what happens, right? Compliance happens slowly. It's just, just, just locked down for two weeks, flatten the curve. Just wear the mask for a couple months. Just wear double masks. Just get the vaccine. Just show proof and documentation before you enter the plane, before you enter the stadium, before you enter the grocery store, the restaurant. And then we create division for extra confusion. We stir the pot in terms of the race, in terms of religion. Then we call our great veterans and our police officers extreme patriots, and we put them on the terrorist watch list. Brilliant, brilliant. Like if I were a dictator trying to take down the country from within, that's what I would do. I would erode your, your First Amendment rights to, to, to free speech. And then your Second Amendment that's there to protect your First Amendment. See, I had to learn. I had to learn the Constitution to become a citizen. You may not know the Constitution if you were born here, but I had to learn the Constitution to become a citizen of the United States. And so that Second Amendment that's there to protect the First Amendment tells us that you have the right to bear arms. And they go, hey, you do. We're not going to take that away. We're just, gonna, we're just asking you to register what you have. It's like, yeah, but, but I did, especially here in California and other states like California where you have to register and do a background check. No, 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 just register one more time. And then, then we're going to tax you. We're going to tax you. $200 fine if you have this, or $200 tax, I should say, if you have this, and if you have higher capacity magazines, which, by the way, high capacity magazines were just regular capacity magazines until they lower the capacity and then call the regular ones higher capacity. So you redefine and re, re, you change the narrative. Isn't that great? You take veterans and police officers that are there to protect and serve and put their life on the line, and then you call them extreme patriots. Those two words should never come together unless an extreme patriot, like I like to see myself as an extreme patriot. I'm extremely patriotic about this beautiful fucking country. But unfortunately, we put a tyrant into power, and what he did is he took a country like Afghanistan, and he pulled out the U.S. military so quickly, knowing knowing that it would collapse over a weekend and the Taliban, which are tyrants, would continue to destroy and demolish in Afghanistan while he continues to less violently but equally effectively destroy and tear apart your liberties, your freedoms. I wonder when you're going to stand up and fight the fight. Love you guys.